All right, this is a little introduction to capacitors. Um, all capacitors really are just metal plates that you would hook up to a, to a battery. And so here's a battery on the left, and what will happen is when you hook it up, uh, charge will flow. So say electrons from the negative terminal of the battery that don't want to be near each other, um, they're just going to run over to the plates. Uh, and and uh, likewise, you could view it as positive charge leaving the positive terminal and going to the plates when, of course, we know what it really would be would be sucking electrons over from the plate, leaving it negative, leaving it positively charged. Uh, but nevertheless, um, you end up with uh, plates that eventually we think of it as being filled up with charge, right? So they, uh, the charge just flows from the battery until the, the plates kind of feel full, feel full, and they'll keep the, the charge on the plates until you're ready to use them. Well, so something to think about with this is how the... Um, the charge on the capacitor will look um, as we let time go by. So let's say we have first hooked this up at time t equals zero and there's no charge on it, all right? Well, it's gonna end up charging up like this. First, it's gonna be a mad dash to get over to the plates. Um, the charge will basically see like what I tell my students, an empty beach. Like it looks like a very inviting, awesome place to go, way better than being at the battery uh, near other like charges, right? These charges will repel and wanna run over to the, to the empty beach. Um, but then the beach ends up getting full. So for instance, in this bottom picture, that next, uh, well, let's even pick on the bottom, that next electron is more reluctant to go to the plate now because there's already a bunch of electrons on there. Um, so it starts charging real fast and then it uh, kind of tapers off as it, as it fills up. Um, and so then if you start looking at the current then, of course what that means is the current starts really high um, and then tapers off as time goes by. So again, it starts high because the, it's kind of like the, you know, the beach is empty, the tourists are flocking to the beach. And then the beach gets crowded and there's no more flow in, uh, into the beach. Um, those of you that are in calculus will notice that the, um, the current that's flowing, it's really dq dt or the rate of change of charge. So the, the charge is growing really fast at the beginning and that's why there's a lot of current. And then the slope of charge against time tapers off towards zero and so that's what the current's doing. Uh, a couple example uses of these things. Well, so a classic would be like a camera flash. What you would do is you'd have your battery that say, you know, powers the camera and the flash, and you have a capacitor, and then you have the flash bulb uh, running off the capacitor. And what happens when you want to take a picture is you're, you just push this button with your, with your finger, and, pew, and that will um, allow the capacitor to discharge through the bulb. The, the opposite charges would like to get back together, so you can think of them discharging through the bulb, and you get a bright glow. Um, you need the capacitor in the first place because the battery in general is not capable of delivering an incredible amount of current all at once. And so what you do is you throw the charge on the plates and then it's there when you need it. So you push the, the button and pew, you take the picture um, and uh, you're able to deliver a whole bunch of charge, uh, have a whole bunch of charge run through the bulb at once. Okay. And then the other uh, example use would be if you had a really janky, really spotty power supply. And so to simulate that, I've got my student Peter here who is trying to troll us by, uh, he just keeps uh, connecting and disconnecting the wire over here. So if we didn't do anything, this light bulb would be blinking on and off as Peter pulled the, the wire off and on, the, um, uh, made, made and unmade the connection here. Well, so what happens is if you put a capacitor in between, during those instants when Peter disconnects the wire here, the bulb can just run for a little bit, little while um, off of the capacitor. So charge can dump through the bulb. And the, what would happen is the, the bulb, even if, if Peter is uh, connecting and disconnecting the thing rapidly, the bulb could actually stay lit um, because in the, in the moments when the circuit's disconnected, it could be running off the capacitor. So that's a second um, use for these things. Right. So a couple little things that you can do to dink around with capacitors. Um, so here's a schematic of one that's filled up. We've connected to the battery. It's full of charge. Uh, well, let's suppose we make the plates a little bigger. Uh, in fact, well, let's suppose we make them twice as big. Um, well, then what you might notice is the, the plates don't seem as crowded now. They got more room. It's a bigger beach. You can fit more tourists on the beach. Well, so what will happen is charge is going to then start flowing to the plates um, because they don't feel full at this point. And so what, what ends up happening is you're able to store more charge on the plates if the plates are just physically bigger. 
Um, so this is a way to increase the capacitance um, by just making the plates bigger. Um, another thing to start with, suppose we start with this full capacitor, and then a change that we make is we make those plates closer together. Well, this one's interesting. What's going to happen now is, you know, this in the first instance here on the left, it felt full, but now you've made the plates closer together. So what's going to happen is this positively charged plate is now closer to the negatively charged plate. Well, what that will do is entice more electrons to run from the battery over to the negatively charged plate. Right, it kind of kind of sucks them over. So if you compare picture one and picture two, in picture two here, the one I'm circling with the mouse, there's more incentive now for more charge to go over to the plates. Um, so another way to get more charge to go to the plates, besides making them bigger, is you can also make them closer together. Um, and then finally, a third thing you can do, again, we'll start with our filled capacitor. And what we're going to do is we're going to put some kind of an insulator between the plates. Um, so we'll fill it with some, some material. Well, what will happen now is the molecules that are in the layer that's close, let's say, to the positively charged plate. What will happen is each molecule, you know, they have ion cores and they have electron clouds around them. Well, those positive charge will kind of suck the electron clouds a little closer. Um, it's, it's called polarizing the, the little molecule, or it'll make an induced dipole moment, it's called. And so um, that happens at the top surface and at the bottom surface where the negatively charged plate is, why that's going to push the electron clouds away. Well, so the upshot is you, you make this little polarization in the layer near the plates. Well, what that's going to do, though, is now you have this, this oppositely charged layer there that was not there before. And so what that's going to do then is entice a little bit more charge to also to go to the plates. Um, so what we're seeing here are three ways to make the capacitance go up. Make the plates bigger, make the plates closer together, or put in some kind of an insulating material that's like polarizable in between the plates. And so finally, well, those three effects can be described um, here. Um, and so if you have what's called a parallel plate capacitor, so two parallel plates of metal that are separated, there's, you have those three handles for maybe increasing or bessing with the capacitance. You can make the plates bigger, increase the area of the plates. Well, that makes the capacitance go up. You can see it's in the numerator here. Um, if we make it closer together, um, that's reducing the spacing. That's called D. Well, you can see if you reduce D, if you make the plates closer, that reduces D, which makes the capacitance go up. And then finally, you can throw an uh, insulator between the plates. And what captures the factor by which the capacitance goes up, well, that's a property of whatever particular insulator you've put in there. So that's something you'll in general look up. That's a property of a particular material. Uh, and so that is how you handle what's called a parallel plate capacitor. So hopefully that's been a helpful uh, introduction.